Hey everyone, Evan Kerstell, happy holidays. Today I'm here with Todd Landry from JMA Wireless. Todd, how are you? Doing really well, Evan. Hope you're all well. I am very well. Uh, we seem to be one of the few in the work, in the office slash working this week, but uh, I suggest that's probably because we're workaholics. In any case, um, maybe introduce yourself. Who are you? Where are you? I see an interesting background there. I'm intrigued to find out. And who is JMA? Absolutely. Well, Todd Landry, I run a lot of the uh, strategic solutions innovation here at JMA Wireless. Um, long history in uh, the world of wireless data, voice communications, as, as you well know, a lot of uh, interesting innovations over the many years. Um, been working with JMA here for about eight years now, uh, doing some significant new innovations. Um, I'm actually up in our upstate New York office, Syracuse, uh, New York area, uh, where we have our new 5G factory up here. Um, so yeah, it's not a fake background. Uh, this is actually... Okay, so hold, hold the gates here. So a 5G <laughs> factory in Syracuse, New York, yeah. um, that, that is absolutely fascinating. So uh, JMA's uh, claim to fame, in addition to lots of technology and patents and innovation, is made in, in the USA, right? Made in That's America, right. software, hardware. So That's tell right. us about the genesis of, of JMA. I'm really intrigued about that as well. Yeah, so funny enough, we, we're uh, celebrating right now our 10th year anniversary as JMA Wireless. Um, JMA Wireless was uh, formed uh, as an offshoot of a company called PPC. PPC mm -hmm. was the leader in making coaxial connectors. Um, so part of that company was sold off to a broadband company, Belden, uh, and then we centered our focus on the wireless industry. So um, a lot of the emphasis has been here. We've been developing uh, not only wireless connectivity technology in the form of antennas and, and distributed antenna systems, but really the U.S. leader in developing the only virtualized RAN platform uh, to really enable, you know, new leadership in the U.S. related to 5G technology, which, of course, as we all know, we really, really need in this country is some leadership right out of our own home base. Yeah, you know, especially given the global uh, threats and opportunities that exist, wow. um, the fact that we're uh, still tied to Huawei and other suppliers is kind of shocking given yeah. the history of the last few years. But we'll come back to the 5G story. I'm actually really intrigued by your personal bio because, um, let's put it bluntly, we're both old. And, oh, there goes my background. We, we've seen a lot of changes uh, in the industry uh, over the decades. And you have an interesting background with 3Com and U.S. Robotics. Uh, yeah. So a company yeah. that's uh, very storied and a great amount of history. Um, you know, tell us more. And I'll be back in one second to uh, get my virtual background up again. But yeah. Yeah, tell us about that, about your you know the your your vision and mission at, at U.S. Robotics. Uh, I'd love to hear a little bit of uh, reminiscing. Sure, sure, not a worries. Yeah, funny enough, I started at U.S. Robotics as a, a hardware engineer, uh, and the mission set forth for me when I joined U.S. Robotics was not to work on a specific project, but to invent something new. And if you knew U.S. Robotics, for those of you who go back far enough, this was a, a largely a modem company, right? We built dial-up modems at the time, those screeching things you connected to your computer. Uh, at the time, to be honest with you, to connect to like bulletin board services, if, if any of you go back that, that far. Um, what I really kind of did there, um, ultimately, is I focused on this emerging funny thing called the Internet. So we built... Uh, a dial access platform with an integrated router that could connect IP into the internet. And, you know, funny, uh, funnier story, we, we showcased it for the first time with, um, believe it or not, a mosaic browser and a, a, a protocol stack built on top of a DOS machine. And um, interesting companies came to bear, a America Online, which <laughs> turned out to be one of the largest internet access companies of the time. AT&T, WorldNet, and many others, and and we took that space by storm. We were ultimately, you know, probably 85% of the market share for the on-ramps to the internet uh, with that platform. Um, and then, of course, the the other one at US Robotics, 3Com, was was really the wireless space. So at that time, 
2G wireless was really used for voice calling with all of our flip phones, but we had this crazy idea that you could build something we called a, a packet data serving node that would connect mm -hmm. to the, the wireless switches and would allow you to connect into the internet uh, using your mobile phone. Crazy idea, I know. But um, <laughs> we built this stuff and we enabled, uh, at that time, Sprint Wireless Web and, and Verizon connectivity, uh, which was CDMA at the time, uh, for connectivity to the internet. So um, those are a couple. I mean, we, we, we did a lot of innovations there, but of course in our industry, access to the internet and being able to access the internet from a mobile device are um, pretty profound things I, I love to have been deeply involved in. Yeah, no, I, I, I love the history there and we could spend all kinds of time <laughs> going down memory lane, but fast forwarding to now, and 5G is uh, deployed, it's you know rapidly scaling up, it's being utilized in all of our iPhones, et cetera, et cetera. But let's take a quick look at this video I found on your site that I thought was really intriguing. It gives some color commentary on your you know, sort of mission and, and go to market, and I'll ask for your comments uh, afterwards. Sources and faster deployments. As the wireless industry expands, there's a lot of big talk about innovation and technologies that can keep pace. At JMA Wireless, we're not here to keep the pace. We're here to set it. Only JMA Wireless brings you XRAN. XRAN is the only 100% RAN that delivers on the promise of full virtualization and takes wireless networks into the new age of 5G. With the ability to operate anywhere in the network on standard compute platforms, XRAN is designed to empower highly densified venues with extreme mobile performance, dynamically putting capacity where and when it's needed, and delivering extreme efficiency without lifting a finger. How extreme? At 70% less time to deploy, that means less resources and faster deployments. Now trim back power and cooling with 75% less cost. And that's not all. XRAN shrinks your RAN footprint by 95%, lowering total site costs. With XRAN's dynamic capacity, RAN utilization increases more than 70%. All of this means your business can now do more with less. And you want to talk about 5G? XRAN is ready. A software change enables radical 5G mobile performance. Now add readiness for mobile edge computing intelligence, putting lower latency, more efficient intelligent services right at the edge of the future network. More flexible, more adaptive, more intelligent. XRAM, this changes everything. Wow, uh, great name by the way, XRAM. It reminds me of something very science fiction, super uh, name. But tell us, why has it been so long coming, this move to software and virtualization, open RAN? It, it's been a long road, as, as you know better sure. than I. It, it, are we finally getting traction with open standards, open networking, and software-defined architectures? Yeah, no, for sure. It's been, um, in fact, exciting a ride. It is complex. I mean, there's, you know, taking, you know, if you think of that video uh, and the transformation we're talking about, most of the networks that we all use today with our mobile phones are built on, you know, non-U.S. technology. Uh, they're um, proprietary. Uh, the hardware-based systems take uh, incredible amounts of power and space. And as most of us know that are in the tech industry, when, you know, we go back to, um, we, you, you can tell me the quote of software eats the world, but it, it when you can, convert things into software, it makes a radical difference in what, what's possible, what you can do. And, you know, I want to think that video is uh, probably a couple years back now uh, when we were first launching XRAN as a platform and we launched it as a 4G platform. Today we have both 4G and a 5G platform. We have it live in networks. We're continuing to build out uh, both some public networks as well as private networks. Um, so the 5G world is in the midst of build out uh, in a lot of places. And, and of course, we most of the industry knows it from mobile operators. Um, it's also being used in 
new build outs that are, you know, we've been public on some of them with uh, the federal space Department of Defense, uh, as well as private networks. So, you know, the, the FCC launched Spectrum for use by private entities. So we've been fortunate to be in a space to have the right platform that we developed and invested in that is completely flexible, very cost effective, very scalable, uh, and it's and built in the U.S. So it's helped us big time in terms of emerging demands for U.S.-based technology. Yeah, it's so exciting. And it seems like the opportunity for enterprise or uh, CBRS wireless as you, is now. I mean, if yeah. you ever had bad Wi-Fi at an airport or a stadium or a hospital, I mean, there has to be a better way. And it looks like private 5G is the way forward. So are you, are you seeing the traction now? We are. We are. And, and you know, look, you're, you're spot on that Wi-Fi has been good, right? It was designed as hotspot type stuff. Uh, if you've ever tried to use it in a, in a dense space like a stadium, it just simply doesn't work very good. Um, it was never really designed for inherent security, uh, inherent mobility. Uh, and we live in a mobile first world, right? So now the concept of connectivity for places like universities and the, the student population, it's all these things. So, you know, this stuff has to stay connected on that campus network, no matter where you're moving throughout the day. Add to it the fact that uh, you mentioned CBRS, which is, is a, a big chunk of spectrum made available to the private sector. We, we now enable that with XRAN and you can basically build these very large scale networks that are very, very reliable and um, persistent in their data connectivity, use all the mobility of cellular. Um, you know, it's, it's going to change the world in terms of what uh, business networks and campus networks look like in the future. So we're, we're right in the throes of that right now. Yeah, it's exciting. And you had some very specific numbers around ROI, CapEx reduction, and move to COTS, uh, commercial off-the-shelf hardware reduction in operating cost, size, space. You know, that's pretty impressive. Are you, are you seeing that in the field as well in terms of real-world deployment? Yeah, yeah, we indeed are. Um, look, uh, in fact, I, I, I think I noticed one of the if I, if I saw it right, it was one of the stadium views in there was uh, there's a place called Stadio Olimpico. And we displaced a very large room area of traditional RAN cellular technology in that building. We took out about 70% of that footprint, old wow. hardware. And there's a couple of racks in there running off the shelf servers uh, that are running the XRAN software on it. And and the funny thing about that, I point to that one because a lot of the question people have in our industry is, you know, well, that software, you know, can never really scale to to the immensity of the problem of cellular, right? But, you know, we, um, to give you a great reference, we were in that stadium live for an Ed Sheeran concert. Um, mm -hmm. Ed Sheeran concert goers come by volume, right? I think there was 8,000 <laughs> people in there. And guess By what? the terabyte, that's how they charge for tickets, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> they use a lot of data. So, so look, we, we had to, when we started designing this architecture with the software, our goal was to make it extremely scalable uh, and very, very reliable so that it could, you know, meet and beat the demands of running a mobile operator network environment. And by any measure, the ability to, withstand 80,000 Ed Sharon fans trying to um, pump all their social media across is a tough test. And uh, we're happy to say we passed that one with flying colors. So That's fantastic. What a fun story. Yeah. So we're almost at 212 and 23. What are you most excited about? Are you looking forward to getting out to uh, Mobile World Congress? That's our sort of industry's penultimate event. Yeah. Anything else in, in January you're looking forward to? Yeah, well, we're in the middle of uh, planning. In fact, I was with our marketing team just looking through uh, things we were going to showcase and so showcase there in a fantastic new uh, design. We've continued to expand our footprint at Mobile World Congress, our industry's big event. Uh, we just came out of the one in uh, uh, more recently in um, Vegas, so Americas. 
but right now we're planning uh, for February, I guess it'll be uh, end of February in Barcelona. Uh, we will absolutely be present there in Hall 5. We will be showcasing, incidentally, there uh, all the stuff we're talking about, particularly solutions, right? So when I say solutions, what's happening is we think of this mobile technology oven as this thing, right? And we, we connect a lot of these with our tech. But what's happened is because of things like CBRS is we're connecting building management systems. We're connecting keyless door entry systems. We're connecting HVAC systems. We're connecting sensory systems so that they can have better uh, analytics intelligence. We're connecting the field of play in pro sports so that coach communications can happen very reliably. So the market is shifting radically, and we're going to showcase a ton of that in Barcelona. Um, hope you're out there. You should definitely come and see I it. will be there. I, I've been going since it was in Cannes uh, and then Nice. So nice. missed a couple years with COVID. Uh, I'm really excited about getting out of Dodge being Boston. <laughs> Probably you're more excited about getting out of Syracuse for a week or two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at least there'll be at least two feet of snow on the ground. And so uh, I'll see you there. And uh, congratulations on all the success and helping uh, Made in the USA mean something in 5G again. Yep, we look forward to more. Always good to see you and chat more and uh, hope to see you in Barcelona. All right. Take care, Todd. Take care, Evan. Right, good to Have chat. Bye-bye.